The primary purpose of this YouTube channel is to help you find the best software out there to get more value out of the computers in your life. Now, one of the side effects of that is that the best software is often paid software. And so a lot of the times I'm talking about things that are going to cost you a few bucks. I don't don't usually talk about like super high end software here, but like a lot of the times you're gonna have to spend a few bucks to get all the value out of the things that I show in a video. And you can't always solve your computer issues or just the headaches you get from using your devices by throwing money at it. A lot of times you can, but not always. So today I'm gonna to show you a bunch of free ways you can make your Mac experience a little better by removing some headaches, by tweaking the system a little bit to just be a little more friendly to what I think is good for a Mac and I hope you think will, is good for a Mac as well, as well as a couple third-party apps that I really recommend that I think are incredible values considering they are totally free and I do a ton with them. So let's jump into the video. Okay, so I'm on my Mac here, and where I want to go first is system preferences. There's a whole bunch of things you can tweak here. So we're going to go into the general section, and there's a bunch of stuff here, but the ones I want to call out are accent color. Uh, so if you've ever noticed, if you go into like the finder, everything's blue, the highlights are blue. If you go into another app, you may have different highlights. This one's orange. You can see that around here. If I go to save the document, all these highlights are orange and everything. And that's because macOS lets apps choose what their accent color is. However, you can override this by using your custom accent color here. So maybe I don't want Sketch to be orange and Finder to be blue and OmniFocus to be purple. I want them all to be the same. And I can do that by selecting a different accent color here. So if I want everything to be pink, you can see everything is pink here. Sketch instantly changed to pink. All the accents here are pink and everything. And if I go back to the Finder, of course, this is as well. So accent color lets you control the look of your Mac a little bit really, really easily. Additionally, while we're here, you may want to look at turn on wallpaper tinting for Windows. Uh, this is on by default. Not everybody likes it, so this has a slight pinkish tint to the background here. If you want to turn that off, you can just set everything to white. That applies to all Windows. Um, turn it on, turn it off, whatever you prefer. Um, I personally like it off. I just like things to look just normal. <laughs> I don't want them to be influenced by my wallpaper, but you may. Um, the other thing I'd change here is your default web browser set to Safari. Uh, a lot of the browsers have a place in the app to set this, but if you can't find it for whatever reason, you can always come here at the system level and change it to whatever other browser you'd like. Next, let's take a look at the dock. There's a couple things I like to change about the dock. So if you right click on either of these little vertical lines here, you can turn on hiding, you can turn on magnification. So if you want the icons to get a little bigger as you scroll over them, uh, Mac OS used to do this, but uh, they kind of turned it off when they got a little bit more professional, a little bit more serious over the years maybe. Um, you can change the position. So if I wanna move it to the right, I can do that. I can do the left as well. And if I ever just wanna drag it myself, I can go ahead and hold shift on the keyboard and then drag it to the part of the display I want it to go. Super, super simple. Also, I don't like that the doc puts recent apps here. I don't always want that. I, I have other ways to get those apps. Uh, so to turn that off, I wanna right click go to doc preferences. And there's a whole bunch of things here. You can tweak all these to your heart's content, but show recent applications in doc, turn that off. And now your doc is just the things you want down there. Next up, we want to go to users and groups. And you may not really want to go here. You may not need to go here and see why you need to go here. But there's one important thing this has, which is login options. There's a couple of important things, but login options is the one we're talking about today. A lot of times apps will add themselves to your login items list and they just boot up whenever you boot your computer, and that's super annoying. So I don't want Steam to launch every time I launch my computer. There's no reason for that. I'm going to remove it. Chrome beta, no reason for that either. I'm just gonna remove that. So when my Mac launches to this user, no apps will launch automatically. And this is just really nice for me um, to have control over what's happening on my Mac. Maybe you do want things to launch, or like maybe you want 1Password to launch, or you want Keyboard Maestro or whatever. Like you want those to launch, and that's fine to put up here, but you have total control over what happens on your Mac. And this is a great example of that. Next up is a really important one for people who watch this channel, because if you want to install an app that isn't on the App Store, you need to have a special permission there. So if you go to security and privacy, I've already turned it on, but allow apps downloaded from, and it may have just the app store selected, which means you can only install apps from the app store. Uh, but if you hit the lock, and then I'm going to use my password for this because my keyboard is not available. Um, you can change this to App Store and Identified Developers. There's a terminal command. I'll try to put it in the description so you can find that if you just want to be able to install literally anything and have the system never complain. Um, but this is the best setting for most people. App Store and Identified Developers. This lets you install things that you download from the web without Mac OS screaming at you about you can't install this because you only can do things from the App Store. Nobody wants that, so this is the right one for most people watching this channel. 
Okay, and then we care about three sections down here at the bottom, keyboard, trackpad, and battery. So in keyboard, I like to turn up the key repeat rate to fast and then the delay to a shorter time, maybe not the total shortest, but when I wanna just hold down on a button and press a key a bunch of times, I want it to happen fast. And so these are the best settings in my opinion. If we go back to the trackpad, one thing a lot of people will wanna turn on is tap to click. Apple doesn't think this is a thing people want. They wanna actually like press the button down, a lot of people like to actually just tap without pressing it down. I like to turn this on as well. Last thing here is battery. So this is where you control when your computer goes to sleep and that sort of thing. So if you click here, when on battery, I have my display turning off after one hour. You can set this to like 15 minutes, three hours, or to literally never happen. Uh, this is not the default. I think the default is like five or 10 minutes. I have it set to an hour because I have lots of battery life and I just, I'm often doing things where I want to just leave the screen on for a long time. Power adapter has its own settings. You can see I've set that to three hours. So if I'm doing a long task, a video export, it'll stay on for definitely a long, long enough for me. So those are settings you want to do in system preferences. There's more you can do here. There's a lot more you can do here, but hopefully those will get you going. Okay, so now the Finder. There's a couple things in the Finder you can do. So if you go up to Finder and do Preferences, there's a couple headaches you can definitely eliminate here. So I'm gonna pull this over here. So these I don't really care about. These are all fine. Um, what I want to change is the sidebar. So the sidebar has a lot of stuff in it sometimes, and there may be things you don't actually care about or want over there. So you can choose what's here. I don't want the list of recent apps. I don't need AirDrop over there. I do like the applications. I don't need the desktop. It's right here. So I'm going to take the desktop away. Downloads, documents like that can stay. And then locations. So what sort of things do you want to show in the sidebar? Um, so I can like turn off iCloud Drive if I don't use iCloud Drive. Um, hard disks that I have plugged in, external disks, uh, like this sort of thing. Um, I'll just leave all those on. And then tags, I don't use tags, so I can turn tags off. So you can customize how many things show up. I should clarify those are over here. So you can see that's really clean things up. If I add desktop back, it shows up there. You can drag these, by the way, drag them around to wherever you'd like. Um, but this controls whether they show or not. I think you can also right click and say remove from sidebar. So there's ways to configure this however you'd like. Additionally, under advanced, I like to turn basically everything off here. So show a warning before changing an extension. This is never useful to me. I turned this off. Show warning before removing from iCloud Drive. This is super annoying if you're using iCloud Drive to like sync your desktop and you like drag it from desktop to downloads. It's going to give you a pop-up every single time saying, do you want to do this? Yes, I always want to do it. So I'm going to uncheck that and then show warning before emptying the trash. I'm sure this is useful to some people, but it's not useful to me, so I turned this off. Just empty the trash as soon as I say to. So those are some Finder settings you can do to just make your Finder experience a little nicer. And then when it comes to third-party apps, there's a bunch here. So Alfred is a really great spotlight replacement, lets you launch apps, do a whole bunch more, but for free, it lets you just launch apps quicker than Spotlight does in my experience. If you're a developer and you're formatting code a lot, so like you get some unstyled JSON, for example, you want to format it, oftentimes there's weird workflows to do that, annoying workflows to do that. Uh, and a really great app to do that is called Boop. You can just open Boop, paste in your text, format it into whatever you'd like, and then it doesn't save a file or anything. It just lets you copy it to your clipboard super easily. For taking quick plain text notes, I really like Drafts, uh, which is a channel sponsor before. They're not sponsoring this video, but Drafts is really good for taking just quick notes. You can use Apple's Notes app as well, uh, but Drafts is really, really nice and can sync across your Apple devices. Uh, I also like Obsidian. If you want some more power, a little bit more nerdiness, <laughs> Obsidian is really great. I've made videos on both those and we'll leave links in the description. In terms of third-party browsers, I usually recommend having at least one Chromium browser on your computer. That can be Chrome, uh, but if you don't want to use Chrome, I suggest Microsoft Edge or Vivaldi, but there's plenty of options out there depending on what you want. For email, there's two really great free options uh, to replace the Mail app because for me, the Mail app has never been great. Uh, Spark is a fantastic option, works with basically every email provider out there. And if you use Gmail, MimeStream is my choice because it's a really great Gmail app that feels like a native Mac app. It is a native Mac app, uh, but it's super fast, has all the keyboard shortcuts from Gmail that you like. And yeah, it's just a great app for handling your email if you're all in on Gmail. If you're ever doing design work or you need to modify images, Figma is a fantastic free option out there. You can get full functionality, use it for personal use for free. Really, really great. Uh, there's some other paid options out there, but if you don't want to use Photoshop or Sketch or something, Figma is a fantastic choice. And then three more apps that are just nice to have around. Uh, the Unarchiver is an incredibly useful 
a tool that lets you basically unpack any file type that you're ever going to download. The archive utility that macOS ships with supports zips and rars and everything. But like, if you come across these weird ones, sometimes it can't do anything with that. The unarchiver is a much better way to handle those files. I also like Visual Studio Code as a free code editor or text editor, whichever you'd like to use it with. But if you're editing code, VS Code is a really great app to have there. And then finally, sometimes you're going to come across weird video files that don't open in QuickTime for whatever reason. And VLC is just the classic. It's a good option to have just on your computer for those situations where you have a weird video file, you want to open it, VLC almost certainly will handle it. So yeah, those are a whole bunch of little tweaks you can make to your Mac to make the experience better. A couple apps you can download for free to get some more value out of your computer. And hopefully this was useful. If it was, drop a thumbs up down below and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.